Hey, it's Greg Ott here with MaritimeGardening.com. Beautiful, crispy uh, Thanksgiving morning here in Nova Scotia, Canada. And I'm going to take down this uh, cucumber trellis uh, using just this uh, little knife here. Uh, I, did a, <laughs> I did a video where I took one down with a machete uh, the other, uh, maybe a week or so ago. And uh, you don't need anything quite so fanciful. In fact, I think, as you'll see, just a good sharp little knife uh, makes uh, pretty quick work of it and uh, just another example of uh, one advantage of um, using uh, jute as a tre trellis. I mean there's trellises that you can, uh, different materials you can use as trellis. You can use um, uh, chicken wire, it doesn't last super long time but it will last multiple years but I find uh, whatever vining stuff you have grown up the trellis you got to sort of rip it off and it's a bit of a pain to remove you know it's difficult to get it off. You can use um, uh, those four by eight pieces of wire remesh. Uh, they're a great material. Then you got a storm somewhere, but they'll last a long time, and they're a great um, thing to use. Um, but I don't use them uh, <laughs> for some reason. There's something about just using the jute tre trellis that I like. Uh, I set them up. Takes a little while, but it's, it's good sort of practice for your rope skills. And then when you take them down, it takes seconds. You don't need to store them anywhere because they just rot. And, and you know, one one a one dollar roll of jute from a dollar store is enough to do one bed. And that's fine with me. I, I just kind of like it. Um, anyway, use whatever is good for you. I've had lots of different comments. Why don't you do this? Why do you do that? Why well, you have to make it everywhere? Why don't you make a permanent one? Um, I don't make permanent ones because uh, you know I, I move things around every year. Right? I practice sort of like you know, succession, not, not succession planning. I, I rotate all my crops into different beds and I never know, I never quite know from year to year where anything's going to go, where anything's going to be, so I don't use anything permanent. I like to move things around and just have my garden be, uh, uh, what's it? I want, I want the optionality, right? I like just be able to use sticks and move things around and, and just uh, sort of uh, do everything on the fly and make my mind up as I go. It sounds a bit of haphazard, but I, I do, if you, if you watch my videos, I do come up with a plan. You know, I, I keep a note of what I did the previous year, and I, I come up with a plan in the spring of what to do, and then I uh, adjust that plan as, as things uh, evolve throughout the season. Uh, you know, um, maybe you change your mind, maybe you have a new idea, maybe something inspires you, or maybe you just have to postpone something because life gets in the way, to family, jobs, so on and so forth. So yeah, I just uh, I prefer this method because it, it works for me. Use what works for you. Anyway, let's see how quickly this can come down. Alright, posts are out. Now, I got all this uh, debris on the ground. I got the old vines, the old jute, and these uh, kind of useless cucumbers. I'm sure there's going to be people say, why don't you eat those? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Uh, these are basically, you know, if you had a chicken or a cow or a pig, uh, you could, or a rabbit or something like that, you could feed it to them. But uh, they don't taste good anymore. These are bitter and Ugh, not good. Uh, maybe good for uh, throwing at a annoying neighbor, <laughs> an enemy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're not really. Uh, if I was starving, I suppose. But so what I'm going to do is the same thing I did last year, where I did I used uh, a technique of multi or uh, composting called uh, trench composting, where you you dig a trench, you stick all the stuff in the trench, and you cover it back over. Um, now, there's people that argue that you're disturbing the soil and you're tilling and all that sort of stuff and I guess technically you kind of are but you're not tilling the entire garden right you're just making a trench and so a good deal of the soil is left alone and uh, you know that whole web of, of living things is, is unmolested it's just uh, a part of it and uh, you know so I, I trench mulched the two adjacent gardens, uh, gardens here last year because I grew squash and zucchini. They just have a lot of stuff left over when you're done. So I trench mulched these two gardens last year. Those are the only two gardens I really did that in. Uh, so the two gardens I grew them in this year I'm going to trench mulch them again, right? 
you know, when you think about these kind of things, uh, cucumbers and, and zucchini and stuff, they're relatively heavy feeders, at least that's what I've read. Uh, so it's good to maybe add a little bit to the soil, give the worms something to eat and so on. Um, certainly I didn't notice any uh, loss in, the, in terms of the fertility or the productivity. If you've been watching my videos, you look at my kale gardens, uh, they're... Oh look, it's... it's when is it? October... October whatever. It's, a, it's like the end of the first week of October. And, and look at look at the kale, right? It's a nice... I got the kale two feet high and it's growing really well. This garden was trench mulch last year. And, and so was that one. So I don't think there's a huge price to pay for doing it. I don't think you're killing anything. I wouldn't. You wouldn't want to do it every year, right? I mean, everything I've read about um, uh, tilling and you know, turning over the soil and so on, uh, repeated applications of that are definitely not good for your soil because it just upsets all the living things that are in the soil that uh, that that just improve are perpetually improving the soil eating your uh, your mulch layer and uh, making your work easier for you. You want to leave those things alone. Uh, but and it's just a way to get rid of the stuff and it works and also I have a my compost bin's kind of full so I'm gonna I, I don't really get to compost here where I live because I've got bears and things that eat compost but I found uh, when I trench mulch um, I can throw a bunch of stuff like that in there and it'll all be gone next year. I mean next year in these two gardens I'm going to plant what are we're in these ones. I tend to just move everything. I have a fairly simple crop rotation method. Generally speaking I just whatever was here I plant it there and whatever was there I plant it over there. Right? And I just <laughs> switch everything around like that. It's that way it's you don't have to think too much about it. Um, I mean it's, it's not quite that strict but that's generally speaking what I do. So these two, the two gardens that I'm going to trench mulch this year are not going to have any root veg in them, right? They're going to be growing kale and things like that, things that grow on top. So it doesn't matter what's going on underneath, right? What, what, what kind of nastiness is happening down there? As long as the worms are happy, uh, everything else will be fine and this seems to work for me. So enough explaining myself and uh, justifying the approach. It works, right? And if, you, if you're offended by it some way, don't do it. But if you've got all this stuff in your garden and you're wondering what to do with it, and uh, you don't want to bother, um, I don't really use compost. I don't compost anything here. Uh, all the composting takes place in the garden beds. And the reason why, I mean, aside from, generally speaking, that's how permaculture works. Um, I started doing this just because I noticed that my compost piles, things really grew well in them. <laughs> so it's like, well, uh, maybe your garden should kind of work that way. And if you look, if you walk, take a walk in a forest, and this is uh, how you're supposed to think and approach gardening as a permaculture gardener, um, the entire forest is a compost bin, right? There's all this stuff laying on the ground, perpetually rotting, perpetually feeding the organisms in the soil, which feeds the things that are growing, right? That's how the forest works, so you're kind of mimicking that in your garden. You don't really need a compost bin. Right? It's, if you're in a suburban area and you can keep compost, um, great. right? And I would. Uh, if I was in that situation, I would. But I, I can't compost here because if I take all my kitchen waste and put it in a container, there's, there's, yeah, black beer will get at it. And there's no way you can protect anything from a black beer there you know, superhuman strength, uh, <laughs> whatever you think is going to keep stuff out of it, they're going to get in if they want. If they want in, they're getting in. Um, and there's all the little things that can get in, right? I've, I've tried burying stuff outside the garden enclosure here. And, um, they're just, just, you know, light burying's of dirt and stuff like that, and the squirrels and the mice and everything just finds its way in, the skunks and things like that, so it's just not uh, worth it. Uh, here, trench mulching, it's gonna, everything I bury is going to be six, seven inches under the ground, and I haven't had any real problems with uh, things getting into it, because because this is surrounded by a fence, um, nothing is roaming close enough to the bed to really get a whiff of it, right? Anything that roams by here is 20 feet away, so I don't think they really um, detect that there's some uh, rotting vegetable matter buried underneath the soil. Um, and, uh, you know, generally speaking, animals aren't wandering in here. The fence seems to keep them out, so far anyway. No. Let's dig a trench. I'm going to 
save the mulch here because, uh, well, it's still good mulch. Right? I'm going to be doing some digging here, so I'll just, I'm just taking it off and then putting it back on and probably adding a little bit more. Now, when I'm all done, this will be ready for the winter. Alright, so now it's time to uh, dig the trench. So we got our trench now. I got some a whole bunch of compost from my compost bin. It smells nasty. And uh, some other materials. I'm going to dump everything in here and then put it all back. And you know, you don't have to do this. <laughs> this is just me uh, finding a way to dispose of uh, garden waste uh, that's large, right? Uh, instead of leaving it lying on top. Anything that's sort of large is going to take a little while to break down. Anything heat loving is going to disappear when it gets cold anyway. Um, but it's just a way to do the garden cleanup. I don't keep, if you have a compost bin, just throw everything in your compost bin. You know, if you have a, a compost pile. Uh, I really don't here. Um, you know, everything inside the enclosure is, is working space and I don't want to leave edible stuff above ground. And uh, it seems like a waste to just put it in my green bin and leave it on the side of the road when it can be feeding the organisms that live in my soil. So I pick about two beds every year out of this whole garden to do this with. Uh, it's just an easy way for me to get rid of stuff. One more point. Uh, I did a podcast just a few weeks ago talking about how the garden, your garden is a gym. Uh, and, uh, and the general theme of that was that you know, if you're a person who wants to get into shape or wants to stay in shape and wants a healthy diet and all that sort of stuff, um, you know, if you watch television, they're giving you advice on how to do that every way but this one and I would say this is the most uh, sensible way if you have the land if you have you know the access to land this is the most sensible logical uh, uh, elegant way to do that right there's always something to do and there's a range of activities from light to heavy I mean today it's you know kind of medium to heavy activity because I'm, I'm using a shovel and any sort of digging is exercise I mean it's about eight degrees outside right now I got a t-shirt and uh, a jersey on and I am sweating. I've almost sweat through my shirt. <laughs> right? So I'm getting, you know, if you're getting that hot when it's that cold outside, uh, you know, you're exercising. <laughs> and of course, uh, what's the result of all that exercise? You get all this food and everything in your garden is healthy. Everything that comes out of your garden is good for you, right? You never have to read the labels and does this have vitamin B, this, or riboflavin, or you know, some insane chemical. Uh, you don't ever have to worry about that. If you grew it in your garden and your garden's organic, it's good. So uh, I, I just think it's a perfect marriage of uh, a desire for a healthier diet, healthy lifestyle, staying fit and all that sort of stuff, is to just keep as large a garden as you can possibly keep. Um, you, you're gonna get your exercise. <laughs> and you're gonna have healthy food. Another good reason to do this, and the main reason I'm doing it today, which I forgot to mention, is that I, I've got one part of my garden that's just gone all to hell, hell in a handbasket, and there's weeds of every kind there, and I got decided to just take a, had about an hour or so to come out in the garden this morning, so I th decided to take a chunk out of that. So I got all this, all these weeds, ferns, and blackberry, bramble branches, and stuff like that, and other weeds. And uh, yeah, there's some weed seeds in there, but I have found that a good many weed seeds 
uh, really can't push through like three or four inches of, of soil. Some can. I mean, so I'm sure there's someone going to say, uh, no, not this kind. This this kind can get through. I have this kind. Yeah, I'm sure you can. I, I speak in generalities on this on this channel. I don't speak to every possible contingency. I'm speaking to generalities. So when I say weed seeds don't can't find their way through th four or five inches of soil, I mean generally speaking, you know, grass, clover, stuff like that. Uh, the seed probably won't even generate because it's not warm enough for it at that depth. But even if it does generate, it doesn't have the energy to get through all of it. Some do, most don't, in my experience. I'm sure there's places in the world where there's some invincible seed that can find its way through anything. I'm just speaking generally. So I could take, sorry for the wind, I know it's windy right now. I could take all this material and throw it on my lawn and go over with my lawnmower. And I do that when I'm taking stuff and putting it on top of a garden because it's just an easy way to get a mulch. Um, but another way to do it is to just bury it and let time and the organisms in your soil take care of the problem while feeding them at the same time. So it's another uh, benefit to trench mulching is it's a, a place to stick all this sort of stuff, right? And it's working for you right away. Uh, this will start to break down before it gets too cold for anything to to uh, work and then uh, I'll put the domes on in, in February and uh, it'll just start up and actually might even generate heat um, so uh, this this garden will be domed in February and so will the one next to it and I'll plant kale here like I did last year right down the middle and uh, with the dome once the soil thaws with the heat from the Sun uh, What's left of this stuff, it's not going to all break down before winter, it's impossible. Uh, I've never seen that happen. Um, but once the soil reaches a certain temperature with the dome on, it'll start working again and it'll actually become a heat source. If I had any, I'd throw some horse manure down here as well because I've found horse manure, uh, this, the weed seeds that are in that, generally speaking, can't push their way through three inches of soil or four inches of soil. So I'm going to put these weeds on, then I'm going to jump on it, then I'm going to put the soil back, and then I'm going to put the mulch back. Now I'm just going to pull the uh, pull the soil back because this uh, material in the, down the center is kind of hollow. You want to make a little bit of a mound because the, it, it is going to flatten out over time, right? So bear that in mind. You want the center a little bit higher than the rest. This is the closest thing to tilling and fertilizing I do in my garden and I, I only do it to a, a couple beds a year. Everything else I usually just mulch and leave alone. I guess for that matter, harvesting potatoes is kind of like tilling so I guess that is going to be uh, Uh, accurate. Harvesting the potatoes is also kind of tilling, I suppose. There's no way to get them out <laughs> otherwise. There we go. Light mound. You just use your rake to get a nice grade, right? Light mound. You notice my beds aren't very high. That's because, at least from a gardening point of view, you don't need raised beds. I mean, you need raised beds if you got an incredibly bad back. And even then, they're going to have to be really high. Right, to be worth your while because you're still going to be bending over unless you're really short. Now if this bed was a foot higher I'd still be bending over to use it. 
So, you know, the whole raised bed phenomenon is a bit bizarre in my opinion. Uh, you gotta go pretty high for it to save your back. Yeah, we got a bit of a mound, that's done. Now we gotta put the mulch back on. I got some, uh, made it to the beach the other day and I got some seaweed, so I'll throw this on. I always find it's good, but as a mulch, it, it adds a lot to the soil. Uh, but if you don't put something a little more uh, like hay or leaves on your garden, uh, your bed will freeze really hard. And I know there's some per person watching my uh, video saying, uh, oh, raised beds, that'll keep your bed from freezing. Yeah, well, not in my experience. Uh, last winter I did a whole bunch of videos where I came out here in the dead of winter with a stick and tried to drive it into the ground and compared my raised beds to my beds at grade. I got a couple beds that are maybe a foot high and uh, all the beds that were up uh, uh, f froze sooner and thawed later. The only reason a raised bed might not freeze up as bad as a bed at grade is because it's got no water in it. But that raises another issue, <laughs> right? I'm all over the place today, so sorry if I'm rambling, but uh, if your bed isn't freezing because there's no water in it, um, you're probably not going to have good success uh, with it as a garden because it doesn't have water. <laughs> right? Beds at grade, uh, they get their water from the soil like every other living thing in the ecosystem. So, one more reason. You know, if you if you're able, you can get down to the ground if your knees and your back will allow you. Uh, I'd do it for as long as you can. Boy, this stuff's wet. That's not salt water, just for those who are worried that I'm putting salt water. <laughs> if you got questions about seaweed as a mulch, I got lots of videos. Just search my videos, just type seaweed in the search thing in the video section, you'll see them. All questions answered, asked and answered. Now we throw the mulch back on. This probably isn't enough, uh, but I'm gonna mow my lawn. Uh, and when you're putting a bed down for the winter, in my opinion, you wanna go crazy with the mulch. There's really no such thing as too much. Uh, so, uh, you know, a good, for something like hay, a good uh, six inches, I'd say, is, is called for. Uh, if you're using leaves, maybe three to four inches for the winter. And by the spring, if you went into winter with six inches, uh, by the spring it'll be down to three or four. It'll just break down over the course of the winter. Alright, so that's uh, one bed done for the year, 20-something uh, more to go. <laughs> now, remember, I don't trench mulch every bed. Most beds I just throw stuff on top and leave them. Um, but, you know, it's a good way to use up all that extra stuff. and uh, Great way to get a little bit of exercise in the morning, get your, get your body going. So, uh, I hope you found that interesting. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comment section. I'll try to speak to them. They might even spawn the idea for another video. Uh, so uh, if you enjoyed that, please like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com, where I talk about all this sort of stuff. And until next time, get out there, get at it, and have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. <laughs>